Blog Talk Hello? Radio. Hello. Today is Sunday, July 30th, 2017, and school is officially in. <laughs> Y'all should see me over here doing the Ben Marquis shoulder mount for that joint. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Yo, thanks for joining us today on the Schools It Podcast. I am Mitch, and I am joined once again, as always, by my illustrious co host, um, the always um, making lists ant. <laughs> what up, what up? And uh, the always, um, hmm, how can I put this nicely? Maybe I can't put it nicely. And the, and the it always, and the, and the always crossing them off his list. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? Uh, so if you're joining us today, we're happy you're here, and we're doing the list show, with the Conscious and C edition. So today we're going to go down our list. We probably only have time for five a piece because we tend to get uh, really hyped when we get into this shit. And I don't think we're going to have time to get like ten of them in in this case. So, but we're going to do a lot of that. names. A lot of names will fly though. Yes, and we're and we're working with our definition of consciousness that we were using on our conscious rapper show earlier this month. So, in this case, a conscious rapper is someone who is what and uh, contemplative. Contemplative. <laughs> someone who is contemplative and who causes you to ponder. Okay. And go into deep thought. So that definition is a lot wider. And it <clears> gives <throat> way for you to have a... Really? <laughs> how far did we get to the episode? Aaron, <laughs> like, how far? Two minutes? Oh, man. It's the running joke. Okay? It ain't no joke. It ain't no joke. Style P. Style P. Here he is again. What up? Shout out to Google. Oh, brother. So let's start off with you, Aaron. What's your number five? My number five, and oh, I didn't put them in a particular order. Well, can you can you like rank them quick quickly so we can? My least favorite conscious rapper, I would say, is DMX. What? DMX. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my least favorite. I love, love, Eric. I love you, Eric. <laughs> I have good reasons. I have good, great, excellent reasons. Oh, please, <laughs> please um, expound because I'm going to need something so, to explain that to me. So I have to explain why I count DMX as a conscious rapper. Please. For those who don't know, I always say that a gangster and a gentleman and, and then there was X changed my life as a kid. Oh God! Because it's the time that I came across him when I jacked him from my sister, I just took him from her CD book. Uh-huh. I was in transitioning from fifth grade to sixth grade, and all through elementary school, I was getting in trouble for talking shit, getting in fights, people talking shit about me, and me like overreacting to that. Mm-hmm. So, and I knew I was going to Gillespie because like I didn't get accepted in the other schools because I talk shit all the time. Like, I was smart enough. I had grades. I was smart enough to get in, but I talk shit all the time. So my baby is great. Do we have to shit on Gillespie in the process of this conversation? Though? Gillespie is a school for bad kids. I don't care what <laughs> nobody says. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm walking around, you know, I'm listening to And Then It Was X and The Gangster and The Gentleman. And what they taught me was, and you can still carry yourself as a man without responding to every little dumb thing that somebody says or does to you. Um, you please, still... uh, please point to, to a track or tracks that, that, that led you and brought you to this contemplative place with DMX. 
Well, see, it, that, I'm talking about, and then it was that specifically, like the whole album, the way that he formatted it and presented it, the whole story. Okay, like, the, so no the song in particular was bringing it to you. The one that comes to mind is, uh, here we go again, like, especially the skit in the beginning where he, he's standing outside, he's smoking or whatever, you know, and then some boy walk up to him like, yo, let me hit that, let me hit that. And then they start talking. And he's like, yo, I'm willing to do anything to get this money. I'm willing to rob, still kill a nigga out here if I have to. And DMX mm-hmm. like, yo, all you got to do is keep it real, be real with your niggas, money will come. Like, stick with your hustle. And the boy like, no, nah, fuck that. Like, I'm about that paper. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm a real nigga. And DMX stop and get quiet for a second. He's like, give me my motherfucking blunt back. You got a lot to learn, dog. I didn't attract You know what? I, 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 I like that, especially given the fact that DMC... Sorry, DMX. Not sorry, what else? DMX was known, DM, DMX was known in the streets for having been like yeah. that, that kind of dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was snatching people. Like he was doing what New York niggas do. He was snatching chains and robbing people and yeah, you know, selling yeah. drugs. He he was very contemplative, even though On he was track. doing the shit. Even though he was doing the shit he was telling me not to do, he was still telling me not to do it. Well, I think he had stopped by then, probably. I'm going to go out and let me say he wasn't snatching chains when <laughs> when a gangster and a gentleman. You well, gangster and a gentleman the styles. That's a different story. That's a different story. Oh, yeah, but sir. like gangster and a gentleman, you got to remember, like, uh, X was, like, late in his 20s, too. Like, you know, he was a little, yeah. he was a little older and, yeah. like, um, you know, his um, you know how it is. Like you get older and you you think a little bit different, which is another thing yeah. I appreciate about um older older artists or just like you know older people in general. Like nowadays, you got people like you know um uh Meek Mill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still feel like he in the same frame of he in the same frame of mind as he was when he was you know when he started popping when he was 21 or whatever. So and, and you, you know. really should not be at this point because he's 30 fucking years old now. That's yeah. sad. That's just sad. And that's, that, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean a gangster and gentleman. I actually meant to say, and then there was X. I'm sorry. I just yeah. missed both. So, so okay. Well, I mean, I'll, I, I will, I will take that. It's lacking a little meat on the bones, but I, you know, I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> it really is. It really is lacking though, because like, um, like, like we said before, like that's why he's number five. That's why he's number five. That's why he's number but five. But okay. it's a lot of it's a it's a lot of people that do that though. Like it's it's people that um you know they got like a conscious aspect to you know their um their music yeah. or whatever. But that's not that's not largely what they're known for. Though. They're known right. for okay. yeah. Right. But see, that. but see, that's the thing. That's the thing about DMX is like his whole career can be argued to that point. Like he, his his DMX is one of the most consistent artists out there, whether people realize it or not. Yeah. True. He is, but I don't know if that if that qualifies him. Like, like the message is always for the, the, mes- for the, the, for the consciousness. Like I like there are some people I wanted to put on my list that I didn't put on my list or that I didn't rank higher up on my list because the the conscious shit they do gets undercut by uh-huh. their fifth stage niggardry. Like I I can't ex- I can't <laughs> I can't ex- excuse your fifth stage niggardry. Just because you throw out the words, you know, build and and you know, black and love together in a sentence. But see, that's the thing. That's the thing for me. Is not. It's not just a song by song basis. Like that's his image. It, like it DMX is that he that, he that that old head, he the OG on the block that did all the dirt. That's kicking knowledge to the youngest. That's telling I, them, you know, don't do this, I do that. I think that's what I got from what you were saying. I, and 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 again, I think. I think that's the reason why I would say that that's that that's, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Aaron, five. Oh, my number five. Mhm. My number five is KRS. My two. Yeah. I missed that. <laughs> what was that? I missed it. I couldn't hear you. My number five my is KRS. KRS one. KRS one. Number five. Yeah, Chris Parker. Chris Parker, son. Why five? Because well, there are other people who might be more list. conscious. Y'all, 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 list. More, y'all list are a little more elite than mine. 
Well, we we already had this conversation though. Like I already told y'all how my list was gonna turn out because yeah, it was gonna know, be like a like a um yeah. a, a a Mount Rushmore. It was gonna Mount be more Rushmore, like yeah. Yeah. And let me just say for the air that there was a while. Like I might, I'm still kind of on the fence about it, but I think for the general goat discussion, like the general goat, even though you might not like him, but you have to acknowledge his standing. Like I think KRS is the number one for that. Um, I would KRS still argue that. I would yeah. still argue that Rakim is number still, one for that. It's still, it's still up for debate. It's still up for debate. Well, people be, like KRS, Rakim, not Rushmore. Between, well, between Rakim and you mean of all time? You mean of all time, right? You mean goat of all, all time? All time, they check all check boxes. Like I was, you know, it, that's impact. definitely that's definitely a different a different discussion for a different day. Yeah. Yes, yes it is. Um, but that might be a couple Karis days. <laughs> Karis won. And go ahead. Sorry, oh, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Um. Well, he he number five on my list because um. You know, like you know, everybody. I feel like everybody, like y'all were just saying, like everybody likes KRS. Everybody got respect for KRS. Mhm. But um. I feel like it's I feel like it's people over him be more so not because um not because they they more more conscious or whatever or they talk about they just talk about more things than he do. I feel mm-hmm. like the rappers. I feel like it's because um a lot of times KRS come off more preachy. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of a lot um, of times you just it's just like, you know, it's like your 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 dad telling you <laughs> Your dad telling you, um, you know, stop doing drugs and you know, you need to get your life together, that type of thing. Like, I, I feel like that's um how a lot of people, especially people like uh, my age. Um, and yeah, I was going to say I was going to interject for myself because we had the same number and Karis number five on both our lists. The yeah, reason why like, I would say that 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 because if you look at it from my standpoint, Karis was coming out when I was in high school, and that's what we were listening to. You know, or even he, he actually came out when I was in middle school. Shut up, both of y'all. And <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Shut up. Look, y'all just got done saying forty year old women were sexy. Fuck our fuck Forty year old women are sexy. <laughs> so like Shout he wasn't Woohoo! Applause. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like like for us he wasn't so preachy at the time like I'm gonna throw out certain so like okay if you start getting into his older stuff sorry into his newer stuff yeah but that's because he's I think he was directing shit at a, a different audience that wasn't necessarily our age anymore like right, when we first that. came out you know when he first came younger, out, we yeah. were younger, yeah, and he was just he was just flowing. Like I I threw on, you know, like his 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 albums and his songs and I was entertained and uplifted at the same time. Like he was talking about being a philosopher, he was kicking it about the industry, he was he talking was about, about like he was educating you on, on he, was, he was talking about you making sure you use protection so you wouldn't be out here getting AIDS usher and the <laughs> <laughs> like he you know his songs were they were hooking you up they were giving you knowledge like he was talking about you know how to control yourself and not you know be violent out here in the streets mm-hmm. because that's what people wanted to see another race fight endlessly but right. you know, now it's now yeah. in a general sense, I would give KRS that. But in a personal sense, I couldn't get into his music. No, I can get I can get That's into KRS one. Like I I get with um I get with Mitch saying about um his earlier stuff because if you're talking about like KRS one by himself, it's like a lot of times that that preachy thing comes across a lot of times. But if you listen to like early like boogie down production shit, like I can yeah. I can rock out I can rock out to that you know more yeah. so. It's just that, like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have that problem when it comes to Rock Kim. Like, I can listen to Eric B and Rock Kim and then transition to Rock Kim by you can herself start, and be like, you, you know. You can start anywhere with Rock Kim. 
But Wakim is a little yeah, bit different. He's not on the same. He isn't wavelength. on the same wavelength, and I would argue that KRS One is actually like really giving you a deeper, mm-hmm. like more of a conscious message. Mm-hmm. In that, like in that, he's giving you a wide range of topics that he's trying to educate you on. Right. Yeah. And for sound of the police alone. Woo, woo, he gets number five for me just off that. But five? Jesus. Yeah, but why why he five on your list though? I, I told you why he number five on my list. Well, I mean, we'll get to number four and then because there are other MCs on this list for me that take me to a higher level of consciousness. Like so every time I go up on my list. I'm hitting a higher level of consciousness. Is that's, number four that's, Eminem? That's, that's, oh my goodness. <laughs> we that's, didn't that's, define that, I guess, strictly enough because I would like to reiterate <laughs> we're talking about consciously in a positive way. Oh, man. <laughs> Eminem makes me think about killing people and locking folks in a trunk. I don't think that's, that I that's want. Very, it's very consistent. That's because it was to the point of premeditation. But it's not good, though. It's bad shit. It's horrible. Oh, man. We had to it's, make a shock rapper list, and then we'll talk about Eminem on a whole other oh, day. It's, 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 interesting. <laughs> it's interesting to me, though, that um, you say um, that it's people higher on your list than KRS, because generally when I talk to people like, you know, um, that's older or around your age, like, they always put KRS, like, high on the list. He's yeah. upper echelon. That's why I had the reaction he I had. He is, but like, my y'all next dude... Way different than mine. My next dude is also upper echelon, though, too. So, okay. okay. And, and number four. Who's your number four? My number four, my number four, I couldn't decide between Black Thought or Nas. Okay. Because they're both dudes who are conscious rappers mm-hmm. and they're both lyrically disgusting on the microphone yes and by bad and he means good just so you know bad means good for anybody who doesn't understand the way yes. black not bad meaning bad but bad works. meaning good yes <laughs> stupid means smart <laughs> well, et cetera, et cetera. I was actually quoting from Peter Piper Peter Piper yeah yep not bad but, meaning bad but bad meaning good People who don't understand that bad means good wouldn't get the Peter Piper reference. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I want to say Nas. Okay, so Nas is your number four. So wait a minute. Nas Why is, is he number four? Wait a minute. Did you say Black Thought was number... Wait a minute. He isn't number one on your list? He's not number one on my list. That's Conscious what? Rappers. No. Conscious Rappers, no. The Conscious Rappers, no. He's not... Ah! Because, all right, so Black Thought is the number one on my conscious rapper list because his wow. music is not always the most conscious. I don't have a sound effect for that shit. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> okay. Black Thought top five that are alive, period. <laughs> <laughs> Nas is number four because I just knew Black Thought was gonna be your number one. Nas is number four because I really, really, really hate Uchiwali and You Owe Me One. Oh, why did you even have to say those things out loud? I I hate, I hate both (laughs) of those songs with a passion. Oh my god, I hate Uchiwali so bad. I hate (laughs) both. I hate both of those songs with a passion, and I feel like they were so detrimental to it. Like, they were career-threatening for not. <laughs> they were so beneath him. You know what, though? They, uh, me and my boy were talking about this and, and, and Aaron. He believes that every detrimental move that Nas made was was instigated by Steve Stout. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, really? <laughs> Shout out to your boy. That's... <laughs> but see, Nas took that shit and ran with it. He took it and ran with it. Those songs are horrible. I can't. Oh well, I mean, God. he didn't have, you know, like between him and Jay, he always had the more 
you know, steady there, you know, there she goes more type of career. And Jay had the summer bangers. And now they ain't had the summer bangers like that. Is it Uchi Wally Wally or is it one mic? <laughs> uh, look, look. Come on. Nah, you know better. I know, you know better. I know. But I mean, look at Rakim. Look at, um, look at Rakim and Truth Hurts. <laughs> That was a feature. <laughs> I, it was a feature, but Eric, he caught Kelly, Kelly Black for that shit. But it's only one of those. It's That's only one of those like on his record. Him selling weight and shit, and everybody was like, "What the what? And, is Rock Kim on this show?" But see, the thing about that was Rock Kim. Rock Kim, one of those rappers who rap from other perspectives. So does Nas. That was somebody. That was somebody else's perspective. Yeah. Uchi Wally and. You owe me wasn't from somebody else's perspective. Yeah, that's true. They were not. <laughs> <laughs> that was Nas and his. I'm having a sleepover with Nicki Minaj bag. Oh hey, God, yo. not really because <laughs> uh, it, apparently those sleepovers are platonic. The fuck. Uh, that's what they want to say for the media. Whatever. How you gonna be platonic with the guy Nas? Ain't no way in hell I'm Nas and Nicki Minaj spending the night and I'm not like yeah. testing out kick those my, airbags. Kick, <laughs> kick my. If I'm okay. Nas, I'm testing out the airbags. I'm testing out the airbags. I'm sorry. I mean, does he think she's quality or something that that he will wait or something? Nicki. Yeah. I don't know Nicki. I don't know Nicki personally, so I can't get on air and say no. But you know, I feel okay. like I feel like at me in the group like, chat. <laughs> I feel like Nas losing points as this conversation goes on. <laughs> well, hey, he beats number five. He beat out DMX. <laughs> and KRS okay, won so, Okay, so um, uh, <laughs> I feel like Aaron is right. I feel like Nas is, is like descending <laughs> down the list as, as you keep going further into that. Uchi Aaron, Wally was a bad look. Uchi Wally Wally Aaron, was a bad look. Aaron number four. Uh, number four. Mm-hmm. Um, number four on my list would have to be Chuck D. Who? Chuck D. Mine too. What the number fuck? Four? What the yeah. wrong yeah. Number four? What the hell is wrong with y'all? Number four? What's wrong with you? You don't even have Chuck on your list. What are you doing? Chuck, I, I already, I already told you though. <laughs> like we had this conversation. Yeah, Chuck D. Chuck D. is my number four because we number urge four? to merge. We live for the love of our people and the hope to get along. If Chuck gonna be on your list, he gotta be at least number two. No, he doesn't. I told no, you. He, he don't have to be. No, he What's doesn't. Wrong with y'all, list? y'all list are on no, steroids. It's, no, it's not wrong. Look, <laughs> so. Like, Aaron, Y'all got a different memo than I got. <laughs> Aaron, go ahead with yours, and I'll tell you why I put him number four on my list. Um, I, I put him number four on the list. Um, because of Flavor Flav, right? Right, right, right above Flav, right, right above KRS, because I feel like um, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I don't know, like when you listen to when you listen to like uh, Nations of Nation of a Million, and like I even even album. yeah, even even That's like um. Did. Even like uh 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 what's the one what's the one with uh shut them down on it? Oh no, that's um that is um their third album. That's um Fear of a Black Planet. Black, yeah, Black Planet. Is, Fear is of Black on that? Planet. Yes. Yeah, I Fear thought it was is that you sure oh, it's not Bum Rush's no. show? No no no. Bum Rush's show is first. Okay, okay so say, the very first say, album is called Yo Bum Rush. Okay. Chuck well, well, I mean, the whole group was full, Umar. Yeah, um, I, I I put him on the list because um, you know, like when you listen when you listen to those records, it's like uh, it's like Mob Mex and rap form almost. <laughs> What's wrong with that? That should be number two on your list at least. You know. No. But, nah. Who's more? It's not why. Who more woke than Michael Mex? I'm telling you. I'm telling you why I put him on the list in general. I'm not telling you why he loved. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So so pause for a second. Okay. So here's the so Public Enemy. Their discography is okay. The first one is Yo Bum Rush the Show. Number Classic. two is a, 
it, it, it takes a um, nation of millions, which is two. Fear of Black Pan, which is three. And the Magic. song that you're talking about, Shut Them Down, is on the next one. It's on Apocalypse 91, The Enemy Strikes Back, which is the right. same um, one, I believe, that has... Um, No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My what, what, like um one of my favorites by the time I get to Arizona. Yes. But yeah, yeah. Okay, so now go ahead. We got it right. Right. Now. Yeah. Number um, four though. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean the, you, you, you see what I'm talking about when we get to the top. <laughs> your number three your number three must be Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um yeah, like um uh Chuck deserves a spot because I, and I feel like a lot of times he don't he don't get like um the credit he deserved for like you know uh for like being in- influential to a lot of the rappers that we um deem as conscious you know what yeah. I'm saying? even some of the even some of the rappers that you know what I'm saying on our list right now like you know um I feel like he more he more influential than um than um you know a lot of yeah. his contemporaries around that time. Oh, he yeah. goes right into he goes right into the uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Huey P. Newton, Fred Hampton he category. Does. Like he does, he transcends the MC list. And you know he was very, very. He was actually older at the time when he when he was um, in the game in the late eighties, like when he was coming out with Public Enemy. So a lot of the MCs were like really young, and he was like damn near 30 already mm. so that was part of it I think that he just had a, a certain level of maturity that other people that you know they they didn't have because he was a grown ass man already He you know he was starting mm. to move into that, that stages of adulthood plus you know he was already militant so the reason why I put him on my list as number four is the same thing kind of what Aaron is saying but a little bit more extensively like he brought me to a higher level of consciousness than KRS like he and he definitely um, was influential to the other people who are higher up on my list Mm -hmm. but but it just for me personally it depends on I think what I was on and, and where I was at mentally you know that he kind of set the stage for me to get to that next plane whereas i think some of the people who i pick higher up have a a little bit of a wider range and can Mm -hmm. take me in a lot of different directions where chuck d was you know he's he's mainly on like the same kind of stuff krs is on you know they're really on you know expanding you as far as black consciousness goes and i get that i love that because like chuck d and public enemy like uh, come on man like uh, fight the power um black still in our chaos bring the noise I love that song bro. Burn, That's my how favorite. You burn i smell a riot going off like this you know and like I mean, said it's mostly the voice. huh like guru said it's most of the voice look and Chuck just he just took you to a place and just you know he he made you think over some hype you got that Baptist preacher voice yeah look over some <laughs> hype ass production by you know the Shockley <laughs> brothers yeah. and just really took you there and that's really I think that too added to it because if if the if he did what he did but he hadn't done it over the kind of beats that he did it like he wouldn't be able to hook you in if he didn't have that production yep. style if you if you ask me if you ask me i feel like i feel like um uh, uh public enemy is the reason that uh that that um you know the machine as we would say pushed gangster rap as hard as it did i feel like chuck, chuck d and public enemy is the reason why because you know what i'm saying when you listen, when you listen to that yeah, when you yeah. listen to that, yeah, mm-hmm. when you listen to that shit, you like, yo, like, you know, they, they on some other stuff right now. Like this rap music is about to, about to take another type of move. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when you, when you get a hold of gangster rap and you like, oh, we can just market that. You know what I'm saying? And, and turn that into the narrative. You know, yeah. so to watch it, to watch that other shit out. Cause you know, after Chuck D, you got the Jungle Brothers. You got 
Tribe Called Quest, the whole Native Tongue family. You said the whole Native Tongue crew, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And they, mm-hmm. they use gangster they use gangster rap for that out. Yeah. That's all the cool on the screen. Shout out to Alphonse and Edward. Okay, number three. Ant, number, number three. three. Number three for me, since I chose Nas as number four, is Black Thought. Okay. Black Thought, because, and I consider the people I consider because I took both the conscious and the rapper part into consideration. Yeah. Like yeah. Black Thought is a better rapper than a lot of people. And everybody should know right now that Black Thought is Anthony's top five. Dead or alive. Stop out dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> dead or alive. That includes Is there everybody. anything particularly mind provoking about what Black Thought says, Ant? Go back and listen to the Roots first five albums. <laughs> <laughs> their, first, their first five albums. My favorite. I don't have to I, concur with it, that. it depends on the day of the week, but today my favorite Roots album is uh I want to say Illidelf Half Life, but I think it's the the second John. Um, uh, what's it called? Do they want more? Do they want more? Do you want more? Like silent silent treatment and shit like that. Like even though he was silent a cold dog, is- he was a cold dog on that track. But like he listen to all the reasons why he shouldn't be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> like Black Thought is just masterful with his craft, and every MC in the game, every MC in the game should look up to Black Thought for what they should do next. Uh, you how know they what? should truck so, their rounds, how they should attack the mic, how they should pick since their. Since you beat. were talking about his 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 levels of consciousness, I'm going to throw out a song for one of my favorite fucking songs that he did that's consciousness raising and on any given day I'm like you my my favorite um Ruth album can like rotate but uh-huh. in general for some reason I keep going back to phenology I don't know why yeah. Phenomenal. but Pussy Galore is one of my Pussy, favorite I'm, songs let me tell you I had so many arguments with my mom about Pussy Galore <laughs> Cause I was blasting it, blasting it out loud in the house, and she like, turn that shit off. <laughs> I'm like, how you gonna tell me to turn that shit off? But because of the cussing, but you cussing at me to turn it off. <laughs> I'm like, don't, don't focus on the cuss word, focus on the message. You know and what? Like, she probably couldn't understand, you know, what he was saying. And then now, if you play some. Some Yeezy or something, then she would really be lost in the thought. Yeah, my brother, my brother plays whatever he wants in my mom's house, and that shit is garbage and it's profane, and she don't say not a damn word. That's because he's younger now and she's tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's generally how it works. <laughs> but Pussy Galore, Pussy Galore was genius on wax. Yeah, it is. It was genius on wax. He, I don't I know. Just, I think I think my favorite, my favorite Billboard. My favorite Roots album, a lot of times now, ends up being How I Got Over Me. How I really? Got Over is How I Got Over is in the class in the league of his own. It mm-hmm. really is. Like I was, I, I, you know, you know how you go back and you listen to something, and like I was listening to that John. That's like, one of the uh, albums I put on my playlist when I need to refresh. Yeah, like a few months ago, yeah. and like you know, just like, just yeah, like so you know, when I was playing that damn Meek Mill album, and I wanted to throw myself oh my from God. a fucking flaming building. Oh, yeah, it's just like it's just like the instrumentation, the song transitions, and like just the content of you know what's being talked about. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's like talked about broadly. It's not like you know just focusing yeah. on focusing on one specific subject. So you know, like that's how I got over it. Like yeah, it's probably like my hype about hustler, hype about hustler. I like that John. I you so know what's funny? I've been, I like I've been on the fence about I've been on the fence about hustler. And you know what's funny about that? Um, what? I was I was thinking about how like I like listening to PD Crack when he with the roots. Uh huh. <laughs> Live and direct. I need no mic check. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right yeah. But like, but like, otherwise <laughs> you're like, um, just say nah. no to PD Crack. Right. I feel and like it, being in the same vicinity <laughs> of Black Thought brings out the epic in uh, niggas. See, you know but what? This is, Maybe PD Crack is a feature MC, like Aaron always says. 
Yeah, definitely. Speaking of feature what? MCs, speaking of feature MCs, you go to any of Black Thought feature tracks and he murdered that shit. Pretty much, yeah. He yeah, mur- but, fucking, mur- but, fucking murdered it. But that's another thing. That's another thing. Like Murder. I feel, I feel uh, like, and this is, and this is probably why, like you know, Black Thought not um didn't didn't come to mind for me mm-hmm. with this list. Uh huh. Is because I feel like. If he wasn't, if he wasn't with the Roots and they didn't do what they do, I feel like I wouldn't, I wouldn't like Black Thought as much. Why? I just, I just feel like it wouldn't be the same. It's not, it's not the same. Like, I feel it's like, like we always had a chance to show you that he hasn't had the chance to prove you wrong on that. Mm. Right. But see, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like when we, like, I talk about um the clips. Like, I don't like, I don't like hearing Push by itself. You know really? what I'm saying? I like here. Push, yeah, push I don't like here. Push by itself is fantastic. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm alright. It's amazing. <laughs> like I don't, well, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's definitely certain songs that like, you know what I'm saying that I listen to. That's like, all right, that's uh-huh. cool or whatever. Go, go listen to that. Hold on, John. Rick Ross. Even Rick Ross. Even Rick Ross got contemplative on you. Well, that's because Pusher T. Pusher T can make you contemplative. Even though sometimes what he's talking about is just that China white, he still can make you. <laughs> Push got range. Push got range. He, he, he does range. have range. He be talking about some nigger shit. He be talking about some, like shout out to him, but I couldn't put him on my list because he still in, he's on that 10, fifth 15, level. Um, ten fifteen years uh, he's gonna be on my top five. Ten fifteen I mean, years he's gonna be on my top five. If his brother can rein his ass in, maybe. They can get themselves to a different level. And we'll be talking about that actually on the Pandering Rapper Show because we'll be talking about um, No More Malice. Used to be uh, Malice. I think, I think Malice is genuine. I think Anybody he, that willingly chooses Christianity has to be genuine. Um. Okay. I don't really know what that means, but um, number three, number three, Aaron, Aaron, number three, my number three. Yes. All right. I feel like, all right. I don't know. For some reason, I feel like my list and your list is going to end up being the same except for one rapper. It's not. Probably not. <laughs> but my number three, my number three is Rakim. See, Rakim isn't on my list. Okay. I don't, I don't know if Rakim. I count Rakim as a... Well, Rakim is on my on my other part of my list. He didn't make my top five because there are other people who have who make me think deeper. So go ahead with with Rakim and, All right, and, well, and Rakim explanation. Um, I put him. I put Rakim on my list because you know that's like you know basically the godfather when it comes to lyricists. Like when mm-hmm. when people talk about lyricists, like you can always trace it back to. You know the Melly Mel's, the Grandmaster Cass, you mm-hmm. know um, even Mo D and stuff like that. But I feel like you know what I'm saying someone that really turned the game around and, and you know threw it on his axes like is Rock him, like because um it's a it's a lot of people it's a lot of people that um you know still try to still try to take that spot you know even if they don't. Even if they don't say it, like every everybody wants the love and respect that Rakim get as a lyricist, and that's mm-hmm. why a lot of and that's why you know a lot of times that's why this you know my whole Mount Rushmore theory is this because you know everybody everybody want that like nobody nobody trying to be you know like you know uh, the best rap group nobody trying to you know do what yeah. Tribe Called Quest Tribe Called Quest did nobody trying you know bring nothing to the game that Biz Marquee might have bought to the game or you know nobody trying to do that they trying to be you know best lyricists remembered remembered in time for you know being that so and um yeah. as far as him being you know what I'm saying like uh you know uh, uh Rakim Rakim you know I don't know how he is like he always talked about things you know to Make to make weird stuff, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we say on um, what we want, we want the design, design to be much more than that, but we couldn't see because I'm my track, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so that was that was pretty much his thing. He stayed consistent with it, you know. Um, he never he never switched up, you know. He always he always wanted more. Yeah. 
for me, for me, Rakim, one of my favorite Rakim Jones is on uh, The Master. I think it is Waiting for the World to End. Mm-hmm. And I referenced, I referenced that on the rape a track that we did where he, yeah. he's talking about teaching the kids how to be like thinking adults, how to comprehend for themselves, yeah. how to take on the world as it attacks them, how to handle it with class and how to make the best decisions and shit like that. And like if you teach the youth speak the truth, show them what peace can do and they'll reach for you. <laughs> like shit like that. And he said Absolutely. all he wanted from it, all he wanted from it was to be considered the greatest MC ever. Like that right there is the ultimate and what a conscious rapper should be. Yeah. Um, I and he's number six on my list. He just fell fell out, so he didn't make my top five list only because I listen to mostly. Eric B and Rakim mm. more so than I just listen to Rakim because I'm an old head. <laughs> <laughs> so I like even though a lot of his newer stuff, you know, was a lot more contemplative. Not saying that his his older stuff wasn't. He did talk about things on, you know, paid in full by the leader. Um at the rhythm hit him and don't the technique but I'm just saying he had his moments he had his moments he, he had his moments and the kind of level of consciousness he brought me to was a little bit different like he just kind of made me think mm-hmm. just about things in general I wouldn't say it was like a wide necessarily a wide range of things that he was making me think about early on you know what I mean like like some of his stuff like his like on his second album he started getting more further into that five percenter stuff and you know getting a like but see i think that wasn't on my radar so much like i wasn't trying to check for that yeah because i you it's, know so it's, it's a little it's bit different you say that. because i think i think um it's people that we should be considered for the list for different reasons like um people right. people are more conscious in different aspects like for example like common I feel like Common talk a lot about like, you know, black love and you know what I'm saying? Like what it means what it means to, you know, um appreciate a woman or what it means for a woman to appreciate a man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, right. And that type of thing. And it's a and I you know, I always thought that was dope because a lot of rappers mm-hmm. don't don't wanna talk about that type of stuff, you know. Common for whatever reason. Is. He didn't get there till he got exposed to a, le- a lethal dose of Baduism. <laughs> yes, what? he did. He was always like that. <laughs> no, yeah, he can was. I borrow a dollar, can I borrow a dollar in Resurrection where no, red men No, food. Resurrection was. Can I borrow a dollar? Red. I will give you. They were I'll red give you Can I borrow a dollar? Well, no, it's just... A, Resurrection was not red manish. Nah, it was it, red manish. It no, was very red manish. Nah, both, albums dollar, were, both albums were red manish. No, they weren't. Can I borrow a dollar? Definitely was. But I'll get back to that when I get to my other number. So Nas is number three for me. Alright. And the reason why I put Nas um, above Karis and Chuck D is because Nas um, opens up for me a much wider range of topics and things that he makes me think about. Okay, so Nas will make me think about like the regular kind of you know black upliftment shit but then things that I don't want to think about like (laughs) right um, (laughs) like like oh my god look at those girls over there look at those black girls lost they need to get their lives together or Um, you know I gave you power was definitely contemporary I gave you power I was just getting ready to go to I gave you power like oh my god black on black crime yeah. In personification form yeah. of a gun, you know, or like he even made me think about the way I wrote, like you know, in um, the world is mine. Like Talking he would just be, yes, he would just be <laughs> saying shit that would make me think. Like every second, there's like no Nas lyrics that don't make me think. That's part of his weakness too, is that the and fact think, that he goes he goes from topic to topic so quick. 
But right, I, I was like, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about that earlier. The whole time, it's like, damn, nah, it's like, like my whole mind be racing sometimes after I hear a nah. Yep, that's how it is. That's how it is. Listening to nah, like I was thinking about that earlier. I was listening to uh, Play On Player from Hip Hop Is Dead, and he's uh-huh. like, how much? He talking about he like how much money's enough? Think maybe like the trillion figures, you know. Um, yeah. My daughter passing on to the next generation. Then he starts like talking about e, e Saint e Saint Laurent suits Laurent. and shit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, it's yeah, just like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like that never ended mind fuck. Now I just wonder all people that you gotta hook always doing technology that. up to his brain to get the full picture. You gotta Man. have some kind of projector hooked up to his brain to get the full picture. But I feel like that's that's the way I am though. Like so, it doesn't tax me too much because I'm not, cause like my mind is moving from thing to thing, even like he's like doing, and it's not taking me that long to like move from one thing to the next. But I feel like my mind and my head is still racing when I'm done because yeah, he's yeah. literally taking me on a mind fuck trip. Like like Aaron yeah. just said, the whole yeah. thing is like me thinking the whole time, whereas. That's- that's you yeah. brushing your teeth, African child. <laughs> and, but that's like, some deep shit, though. It's like sending some niggas sick of the yellow teeth, alcohol, aging my niggas it. faster than felonies. It's like, yeah. what one guy do with the other? <laughs> but, like, that's the way it is, I'm saying. Like, like he's thinking about all these things all in his, in his head at once. Like, like, you know what? This shit right here, and this shit right here, and this shit right here. Like, this all that shit that's gonna fucking be our downfall. Like, that's the way yep. I think when I'm listening to a Nas song. Yep, the noise in my head, the curse of the talented. Yep. Yeah. That's some crazy shit. So that's why I put him higher up than KRS and Chuck because, like, his shit is deeper than the minds of fucking Minota. I think, I think also he's just a better rapper than Chuck D and KRS one. Um, he does have a flow, and for everybody who doesn't know this, I actually, I guess we'll talk about this in more detail, but when I do my, when I grade MCs, I use the, there's a God on the mic checkpoint system for elements of an MC that, um, your boy, Who's Kumo the Rimba? Who's the Rimba? Who's the Rimba? Who's the Rimba? Oh, where's Elo's guy? Where's Elo's guy? I don't know where Elo's guy is. Awari, Awari, Awari. But LL is like number. How, how high did he put LL up on this list? I don't I can't I don't remember. Like I, LL is. LL for me, back in the day, is what Drake is for me today. We know Drake is the LL of, of the 2000s for you. I, even though I don't want to give Drake that much credit, I was just gonna say. I do but not want to. I don't know. I don't know. Hotline Bling is is is. Hotline you know. Bling, really? I don't like Eric Badu's version of Hotline Bling. <laughs> I do. It's I know. Fun. I oh my god, stop it! <laughs> but 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 no, but 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 back to Nas. I I. I couldn't put him as my my higher up on the list for the same reason that Ant couldn't because I, I had to take well, I had to take points off for the fifth stage nigga and not is like just sliding to every once in a while like I can't sometimes with you Nazir I love Nas he's like my favorite MC ever but is every Lucy once Wally in a while a big of course it is so is you owe me. <laughs> He's like, throw my chain on, now you owe me some ass shaking and probably some other shit. Like, what? Come on, man. Seriously, no. I mean, he has some some other songs, you know, like on, um, on, uh. The Making of a Perfect Bitch. Not, not God, son. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Not God, son. No, it doesn't. That was very, very well constructed. (laughs) It still deserves a Whitaker. Look, I give it to him. What what deserves a Whitaker? He didn't say nothing about her personality. <laughs> what did, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He what? did too. What did he say? What did he say? He said he wanted her to be smart like, um... Yeah, she got to oh have Sade's mystique. She got to know a way yeah. in the street like Billie Holiday. Yeah, he said mystique. No, but he talked about mystique. somebody being smart too and I can't remember who it is right now. <laughs> I'm getting ready to pull them lyrics up while you talk shit. <laughs> he, he said she has to be smart like somebody, and I can't remember who it is. 
Megan's of a perfect bitch she deserves a Whitaker. But that makes Virgo, me think about Virgo, Virgo deserves a Whitaker. That makes me think about him being a Virgo. That's and crazy. Yo. You hate, you hate all, I like all of those songs too, by the way. Me I know too. you do. I like them. I like them too, but they still deserve a Whitaker. For a no. I mean, no. as far as conscious, maybe, maybe, but. Um, I think I think work? these are our heroes KRS are criminally one. underrated. Underrated. KRS one talked about twelve year olds in the club. I was getting ready to say seventeen and good. That gets a major <laughs> fucking Whitaker all damn day long. Yeah. Okay. And, and we're not gonna talk about him and his defensive Africa band bottom either. I'm not even gonna go there because that was just gonna be my next thing. Look, if you gonna talk about seventeen and good, you gotta stand in a forest and scream Whitaker. Okay. Yeah. That's how fucked up mm-hmm. that shit is. Like for real, for real. So, so that's first period. Wait, I um, didn't say my, my number three. Did you? You didn't? No. Yes, you did. Nope. Nope. Who was it? I've been going. I've been going last. Who's my number three? It was Black Thought. Yeah, nope. it was Black Thought. Was- oh damn, it was. Let See? It- damn. Ah. Oh. Cut it out, Got son. My Five was five was at four was nine three was short. Yeah, so who we got for out to lunch, you guys? Out to lunch today. Fucking mouth. What? Mouth. What? I'm gonna address uh. this nigga like I know him. Fucking mouth. <laughs> I, I grew up. I grew up with homeboy from from the Pump It Up days. Like I heard Pump It Up. I heard Pump It Up and decided he wasn't worth my time. And then I heard the Pump It Up remix and heard him smash Jay-Z. I was like, all right, maybe I'm missing something. So I went back to Right, right, all right, all right. And, you know, he he built a respectable following off his bars and all that. But now he's in the spotlight where he's forced to give his opinion. And his opinion doesn't support his bars or his affiliates or what his career is built on fucking Joe Budden. Mm. Mm. Joe fucking button. Like he's two he's like four separate people on it at any given moment. <laughs> Not four though. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if that shit is on purpose. Like I think it might be. That's but that's why he's out the lunch, because I think it might be. He seems collected enough Elaborate. To, for that shit Elaborate. to be intentional. Like no, like, what four like people are he? If he excuse me. <laughs> He's two different people on the Joe Button podcast. He's he's bitter old man Joe. Then he's business savvy Joe. And then on everyday struggle, he's I hate these niggas Joe versus I love these niggas Joe. Hmm. And like, I feel like you're missing somebody on the there's there's like everyday nine different struggle. Shows. There's, there's one like nine more different Joe shows. missing on everyday struggle, and that would be I'm going to salivate in my socks over this young Casey John. Joe. That that Joe don't count. That Joe don't count for this. He does count. A couple Joes don't count. count for this discussion. Like the the episode before the last episode of Everyday Struggle when he was he was like in a bad mood and he didn't participate at all and it was the academic show. Well, that Joe don't, that that don't, don't count. That Joe don't count. I get pouty. Fuck academic. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Okay. I don't know. Y'all know Joe out the lunch for me every day. I mean, he can he can be entertaining <laughs> sometimes, but he's entertaining. He the- he's entertaining, but he's 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 one fourth from slaughterhouse. He is absolutely with with mad power. Slaughterhouse is banging. Slaughterhouse is good. Mad, with mad power comes dead ass responsibility. <laughs> yeah, <I can. laughs> and he's neglecting the responsibility portion. Like I got my first glimpse. Like I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. I got my first glimpse with that Vic Mensa and my Vic Mensa interview. Yeah, that was. Where Vince mm-hmm. is asking what's about the culture and what's the culture with the people. He didn't check him at all. Not one eye He tried. He, he tried. He whispered it in the background. He mentioned no, no he whispering. Mentioned the element. Oh, he, like okay. you can't whisper that shit. Your are no. Joe Button. Like people look to you to be the balancing aspect of the trio. Of that show, they do. Like you know better. Well, like, I mean, you can't wait for Nadesca to do because technically Nadesca, back to you, Nadesca. Technically, <laughs> Nadesca is she's just like the moderator, so she's not gonna she's be journalist. coming with the wild. Journalist of the three. 
Right. She's a journalist on the three. Oh, he but even check out all the time. Even still, even still, he doesn't. He doesn't. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't. And he, he needs to check himself sometimes when he does. Like he. That day that Vic Mensa was on and he was kind of sort of everybody was wilding because he wasn't siding with that but he was like um well some of, some of that shit is whack but see I, I looked at that mean, I looked yeah. at that like Joe Joe is embracing the media side of it like he, yeah. he like even with the, the Migos the whole Migos thing like I feel like he was in on the editing of the video to make academics look stupid he was in on that. He's I feel embracing like, that. I feel like that when certain people come on the show, like okay, for instance, when when Amber came on the show, uh, and Twenty One Savage is what said to have been like in the coat room or wherever the fuck he was yeah. in the green room in the back. Yeah. I don't fuck you, Twenty One. I'm about to go off. Like I'm not gonna let whatever comes out of her mouth just fly. Like Royce, like Royce said, Joe's so busy trying to be Bobby. <laughs> He's trying to make everybody happy. He's trying to be Bobby. He embracing the media man. Mm-hmm. I'm about to like go off on you if you say some crazy shit. Not, not in a Charlemagne the God way where I'm just gonna go off on random people that I don't want to screw. Or I'm gonna go I'm, off on random I'm, folks I'm, that I mean go off on the folks that I have the problems with for the reasons that I actually have a legit gripe. Honestly, I feel like Joe is emulating Char- Charlemagne. That's what we were talking about earlier. I think he's starting to do that too. I don't I don't like that shit. I don't like it either. Don't, it's, different, it's different with Joe though for me because like it don't seem like with Charlemagne, it seems like Charlemagne be trolling a lot of times because like this is somebody who's true. like you know what I'm saying? He like he like no, because he like like yeah, because Charlamagne he like self proclaimed like you know biggest Ghost State fan ever, but then say shit like uh you know the Uzis and the Yachty they bring something new to the game like shut the fuck up like how you right. like they, how are, they, they, they are you can't dispute that they are they no. they bring something new to the game garbage. though not yeah, okay, not garbage. to this game yeah garbage like, they, they're bringing new garbage yes but you can't dispute that. Okay, but he doesn't mean new garbage. You know what he means. He means right. fresh new energy. We mean yeah. sticky, sticky ass garbage. That's what we mean. Sticky, 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 new sticky, sticky garbage is fresh new energy. It's not fresh new energy. No, it's not. It might be fresh new energy. No, it might be fresh new energy in a negative motion, but it's still fresh new energy. No, it's bad. It's, it's all bad. So I'm it's not deep, about to say it's, it's, it's still new energy. For me, no, it's different with Joe it's because not. I feel like Joe. I feel like Joe. A lot of times, he just don't. Joe knows he just, better. He just try to. He just try to stay away from being the angry black old head. He says he try to. Yeah. He try to stay away from being that guy. The summary, and, the summary, and a, he needs the to summary, cut that shit out. Look to summarize the way Joe is carrying himself in his new role on the podcast is look at Royce Five Nine late in the bars and give an ugly guy the fourth. <laughs> yeah, that's. that's I don't even know what that even like how that could even happen. He gave Ugly God a four. Th- no. But Ugly God revealed some honesty. And I feel like he meant that shit when he said he was busting his own face trying to save the human race. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he meant what? that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, that was some honesty. He knew he was trash. He know he trash. Oh God! <laughs> but see, Joe, but see, Joe, but see, and and that right there—that's the fresh new fucking energy you're talking about. Like, yeah, I know fresh, I'm trash, fresh, but I'm making fresh money. New it's not fresh. That don't mean it's positive energy. That don't mean it's but positive it's energy. Fresh. It's not fresh either. It's not. It's, it's none of those things. It is neither it's fresh. And all over no, again. Nor is it new. It's not fresh or new. Being whack is really old. Actually, but see the thing, the thing, the thing with Joe is Joe is in the spot right now where he's hot right now. People are watching that shit. They are, but you know what? A lot of people are act fans. Like a lot of the folks that watch that show are act fans, and they sit on there and they talk shit about Joe all day. Act platform is a little bit bigger <laughs> than Joe's is. I don't know if I told y'all, but like if you watch Academic Original YouTube feed from the yeah. PlayStation. Y'all, and you read mm-hmm. the comments, like the comments are fucking hilarious. 
They are. <laughs> they're the fucking fuck boys. The little fuck boys that follow him are out there going. Wait, wait. It's, it's especially especially the people that disagree with him though. Like the people that feel like us. There's people that follow academics that feel like us about the topics. I would never about. I would never follow academics. They're but, funny. They, yo, yo, they funny as shit. <laughs> I like the um the act jokes that they make all the time. Like like academics, that kind of nigga that would dot 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 dot. Uh-huh. All those jokes are always like academics, the kind of nigga that would eat that would be doing this podcast, eating cereal in his mama's basement. Like I like all that dumb shit that they talk about when they say stuff about him. Mm-hmm. It's just funny as hell. Mama's basement. Huh? It looked like he's sitting in his mama's basement. Like, you know. <laughs> they always say that too. Yes, I just feel like too. I just feel like Joe. I just feel like Joe don't have a balance. Like it's like either I'm gonna be all the way this way, or I'm gonna just like you know try to stray away from being that at all today because that's really how I'm feeling. Because like it's, um, it's it's, it's, it's certain, um, definitely daily too, Aaron. Like he changes in the wind. Like yep, because day, it's certain days day. like he'll get on there. Like I was watching one John, he got on there. And like mm-hmm. I guess he was genu- he was just genuinely feeling good that day. And the academics was like, "What's up with you?" He was like, "No, nah, today's a good day. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping everybody having a good day, whatever, whatever." Yep, and he just yep. ran. It's like you know, I'm in a good mood and I'm running with it. You know what I'm saying? That's just how yep. he is. Mm-hmm. This smell catalog is out of pocket. That deserves a pause. The what? What? Smell catalog. Smell catalog. Talking about how a certain guest smell. Oh, him and his smell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That shit deserves a pause. And him reading, him reading, um, what's that girl's name? The girl that was on the breakfast club? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Virgo, yeah, yeah. Denise. Uh, yeah, Bernice. Was it her? Was it her or was it Malia, the stripper? He, him reading her teeth and her voice, that deserves a pause, too. That shit was funny, though. <laughs> I was cracking up, I'm sorry. It was funny, yeah. Don't be cracking me up with, the kind of, with some of the stuff he does. That but I but no, you're right. Uh, he's he's just he's not he's not consistent enough and now as far as him being like Charlemagne Charlemagne is a fucking certified troll Charlemagne comes from the wings of Whitney uh, of a uh, of a uh, Wendy Williams so yeah. he learned how to troll from the best I don't feel like Charlemagne the God is quite the same as Joe I think Charlotte really does actually feel like shock value. I think Joe is trying to avoid being labeled the angry old head all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. But he needs to embrace this shit and he needs to be the voice of reason because Ack is going to be the one talking all this dumb young shit. You need yeah. to let him do that and then you do what you do. Right. And I hate and I hate the attitude that he carries too. Like, not Joe, but academic. I hate the attitude that he carry. Like, you know, this is what it is and this is just what, you know what I'm saying? Everybody needs to accept. I'm, I hate everybody that does that shit. Like, stop, stop going along with this narrative that, you know, yeah. the future is changing and this is what it is now and everybody just needs to accept it because this shit is going to, like, yeah, put us in a fucking... Whack. You know what? Crazy academics, it's all just academics, gonna be whack. academics need some pussy that he pulled on his, on his uh, negotiation skills rather than his reputation. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it, it ain't. Man, he needs. Some, that's what he needs. He needs. Yeah, that. whatever. Whatever. He needs academics. Is like it. when Joe said he had some arrested development. He wasn't wrong. He, no. he wasn't wrong. He wasn't he wrong at all. That. He ain't getting it. Because I mean, now what he well, he's, he's in asshole mode most of the time, and he's one of those dudes that acts like that. Like, like, like I should be able to get pussy just sitting here. Like, nobody can just get pussy just sitting here, dude. Unless you're Usher. And you see where that shit led. Yeah, yeah. Usher, Usher, <laughs> Usher, 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 Usher. Or Usher. So I, think, I, so I think you really need to just... Like, he needs to cultivate something. Some charm. Some something. You know. He's a better wardrobe. He do dress like a fifth grader. Well, he's... That's something that uh, Joe is actually always commenting on that really is something that he should comment on. He's yeah, he's been on his top. He, he, said, he, said he, he, said, he, he said he was coordinating the other day, though. He had the yellow and black on and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he told him he come in dressed like a fifth grader, though. Before, because he's like, you're wearing this t-shirt and these pants. Like, you just got out of bed. And he just said, fuck uh, it. Like, he, but he's right, though. He does do that. But, yeah, so that's, um, 
What's out to lunch? Get your shit together. Get your shit together, Joe. We and two. we're on number two, and Number two for me, if the unlimited rhymes universal. Ah. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Mm. If the unlimited rhymes universal recipes, brother. Yo, I literally, I literally physically cried when Guru died. I did too. On top of A Gangster and Gentleman and And Then It Was X, those gangster albums changed my life. I can dig that. Yeah, changed my life. Like there's like all of the gangstar albums I had to go back and listen to after I first listened to them. Like they had to grow on me. But Moment of Truth was that one that I fucked with heavily from the first rotation. I actually am still gonna have to give you the Major Whitaker for No More Mr. Nice Guy. But you know, continue. I, I haven't gone back to No More Mr. Nice Guy yet. I listened to it and like I was like other places. I couldn't get into No More Mr. Nice Guy. I feel the what? same about No More. I feel the same about No More Mr. Nice Guy. Stephanie Arena is like top notch for me. Stephanie though. Arena is the first. But I only album. feel like that because <laughs> that like literally that's what made me. That's what brought like that jazzy like rap. That's what put that shit right up on the map. Like, mm-hmm. without manifest, like that's what kicked that shit off. Like for real, for real. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't around for that. I went back. I had to go back. Yeah, I was. Visit. Shut up. I had to go revisit. <laughs> like by time when I my first gangstar album was hard to earn. Uh oh. And here's and the trip down memory go, lane where Ant wants along, to have sex. Yeah, there's a trip down memory lane. Hard to earn, hard to earn turned me off with a long way to go. Okay. That turned me it's off. Inter- interestingly enough, uh, Stephanie Arena was like the first gangstar album I grew up listening to. My my brother's mm-hmm. favorite brother. song was my brother's favorite song was just to get a rep. Just to get a rep. Uh, yeah. But I didn't get to that. I didn't get to that. I had to my first you was Aaron, you was with me. We used to go to the pawn shop every day. The pawn right. shop has CDs, like you can buy five CDs for a dollar and you get your huh. card punch and you get a CD for free. Like right. I went, we went to the pawn shop and I grabbed like Keith Murray's uh The Most Beautiful Thing in the World. I grabbed uh-huh. Hard to Earn. I grabbed three other CDs. I don't remember what they were. But I went home and I listened to Hard to Earn and I couldn't get past a long way to go. I could not get past it. I turned that shit off immediately. Really? <laughs> I that's really weird. did. I that's weird because that's that's why I kept playing it. <laughs> I couldn't. I could not get past it. I think I, I think I called you. I think I called you when I listened to it. I was like, Yo, that like, shit Yo, like annoying me. Like, what? That shit was annoying me. What? It's, what? It's, 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 it it really was. was. It really is. Oh my! This whole get conversation it. gets major. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, I've been. I, I I have not experienced which like ever like no more it's nice got up in the arena daily operation hard to earn. I've been like I couldn't just tuned I couldn't do it. in from the every, very beginning with Gangstar. Nope, nope. every nope. Gangstar every album. No, every like, Gangstar, Gangstar album. Like that. I did not I did like not. any Gangstar <laughs> album the first time around. None of them except for that, Wow. Except okay, for, okay, okay, for, so, okay, so, so why he on your so list? Because Guru helped change my life. I fucking love Guru. Guru changed my life. Wait, he what song? So what, what, song? Like, what song? Okay, like, what song? Yeah. Like I said, Hard to Earn was my first album. So you got A Long Way to Go. A Long Way to Go mm-hmm. when I sat down to finally listen to it. When I finally listened to it. That shit made perfect sense. I identified with that shit immediately. When mm-hmm. I finally listened to it. Yeah. Um, I went back and I went to Step in the Arena. And like uh, it was a couple drums, especially uh, next girl to ex girl, because I was just breaking up with a girl. I was I uh, that's, with a blind that's date. one of my favorites right there. <laughs> I got set up with a blind date with another girl, with ex girl to next girl. So I went home mm-hmm. after the blind date and I put. Black girls look girl. so good. Next. Yep, yep. I was seeing this, <laughs> this red eyes and all that. Like that was my shit at the time. Yeah. Um, daily operation was my work because of uh. Take two soaps and pass. Two soaps and pass. 
you go too fast, it'll blunt. You know what? I feel like I feel like I love Guru, but Guru kind of mix. Like he he used to do. He would go back and forth into doing what, like, say, a KRS would do, and then doing what, like, Nas would do. Like he, he would, he, he would, he would do a whole song of very like dedicated material, and then he would do a song where he would be jumping back and forth into consciousness. Is like, and you would have to keep following him because he would keep moving and all the I, time. I kept up. I kept up with every single word. It, it, after daily operation, I started venturing into the Jasmine Tad Jones. Like I came across the Ill Kid Jones. I got the Ill Kid Jones from the pawn shop too. I don't remember what else I bought with that batch. I, like I used to buy like five CDs at a time, and Ill Kid was one of the Jones I bought. I got, I think I got, I think I got Ill Kid and Big L Jones at the same time. Mm. That's, you and know I what? Guru is not in my top five. He's in my top ten. He's not in my top five though because I had to knock points off for his flow. I love Guru, but his that, flow. Now, his you ma- know I'm that, all about that flow. monotonous monotone that he has will sometimes, after a while, it'll J Cole you. Yeah, <laughs> it will J Cole. No, 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 hold on. No, I take offense to that. I take offense. I'll to be that. on. Well, I'm sorry, but I'll be on the couch snoozing. <laughs> I think of that. that. I've never, never had a J. Cole moment listening to Guru. I don't get bored per se. His voice I either, actually lulls I either me didn't to like sleep. It or I, love him. I either didn't no, like it or I love No, I love him. Guru, but his voice is like a lullaby. I will, I will inadvertently fall asleep of no, no volition of my own. J. I just will be like. Cole but boring. no, it's not because it's boring. J. Cole doesn't bore me like he does other J. people, though. I don't get J. Cole bored is off straight, of him. He's straight boring. He doesn't bore me. But it's because his voice is so monotonous and it's it, and it's monotone. After a while, it just sounds like somebody's playing me a lullaby. Yeah. 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 So, with Guru, with Guru, after Daily Operation, I went out. I went out. I checked out. I checked out. I had the okay, John. I love that John. I I stumbled across the Bahama deal because of that. I stumbled across the Bahama deal because of that. Nothing wrong with Bahama yeah. deal. I love Bahama deal. I stumbled across the MOP because of that. I stumbled across a couple artists because of that. I stumbled across J Rule damages. damages. J Rule J Rule was gonna be on my list too, but J Rule didn't make the top five either, just because there's so many other factors with J Rule. We will talk about that later though. And, um, Aaron. Okay. Number two. Uh, uh, number two. Number two. Number mm-hmm. two. We want. We want. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> number two. Like, what is going me. on with you over there today? <laughs> my, my, what? my count. My count. <laughs> there's so many rappers I want to talk about. My count is off. Yeah. Number two. For number me two is not. Yeah. Number two. Number two. I think number two think is number two. Two. What? Go ahead. What? Go ahead, Aaron. The conscious rap. Um, um. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, um. I say I Nas think is number two. two. Because, you know, because, all the things you know, all the things talked about before. Mm hmm. Um, you know, just like, you know, like, you know, like, like, like Flow, flow, content, content, like, you know, like, just, you like, know, just like, how he had you all over the place with it. Yep. And, um, and, um I feel like, I feel like he's he, a, 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 a big influence on a lot of, on a lot of people to today now, too. Mm-hmm. Now too. Mm-hmm. Um, um, a lot of it comes from um, people that's on my list for him, for him. Like yeah, KRS, like, KRS, mm-hmm. Chuck D, Chuck, Chuck D, D, Rock him, mm-hmm. Rock him. Mm-hmm. I feel you. But I feel but like I feel um, like um, he took what he they took did, what they did, and, and, and turned it into turned it into you know, like some next level. His own thing. Yeah. 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 So my number two is common. Mm-hmm. And the reason why Calm is my number two um, Quickly Is because I feel like With every progression With Common 
he gets more and more and more and more conscious. Like, I see that. You see it's that? like every album, it just, it, like, he steps it up a little bit and another notch and another notch and another notch. Like, like let me raise you up a little bit high. Like, I, I feel like not only is he learning a little bit more and when he learns a little bit more, he needs to teach you a little bit more and tell you a little bit more. I feel like he, he's, he's conscious of the fact that that by him being who he is that he can't just cram it all down your throat necessarily at once like he has like to kind of bring it to you in level Common wasn't like that thing that is not true <laughs> what? It, I think it is he, this is way, well it's not because there you have Okay, so I used to love her. I said, that's like deep as hell. And that was way before Erica. But how many but tracks on that album sounded like I used to love her? But then you have One Day to All Make Sense, which is still, again, extremely deep. And that was before Erica. And and most of the songs on One Day to All Make Sense are at a conscious level. It's not like... And the only album that I think that he really... Is just like all over the place with it, and it's not that conscious. Is when he was still common sense with "Can I borrow dollars?" And yes, no. Can he I wasn't. borrow dollars? A fucking classic. I love that album, but it's it's definitely oh is God. not. But it's definitely not on the level that we're talking where he's a conscious MC. Like it's definitely way but, more like like Daz effects. It's like I feel for like that ill. Like that. Like that. But that second album isn't. It's only that like that in certain places. Like, like the rest of it has some cuts on it that will make you be contemplative as well. And every album after that, he just went further and further and pushed it even more until you're like, whoa, wait a minute, how we get here? Like yeah. we we like in we like real in deep with it right now because he, he he pushes it even more every time he hits a new album. And then like by the time I was teaching y'all, and like I'm at the store, you know, buying B. We're sitting down listening to a whole Thank album. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, cause y'all don't know, that was when I was teaching Aaron and Aunt is when the B album dropped. And um, this is back when pe- uh, folks still bought CDs and you know, people didn't have electronic music yet. And they, that was incredible. they were like, "How are we gonna get this comment?" I was like, oh, "I'm going to the store to get comment the, tomorrow. I'll just the good old days. I'll just roll up through the store and get everybody some comment." I think that that was kind of the beginning <laughs> of us sitting around listening that to was the birth. Birth. it. Was the birth? birth. <laughs> 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 it was like sitting around like doing our first listen to the B album because it, it had first it, it, it had just come out. That's why he number two. Oh, because the school's in podcast? Sure, let's yeah. go with that. <laughs> 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 okay, okay and drum roll. Number one. number one. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. ironically, Woo-hoo! my number one has nothing to do with music. What? This nigga. This nigga. He stayed mm-hmm. on Twitter, Twitter, oh, all day, no. oh lord, every day, <laughs> including Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Beefing with racist motherfuckers <laughs> and his DMs on his mission, <laughs> setting them straight, <laughs> Word. telling them in and out of this culture, teaching them the ignorance of their ways. Oh my, my man. Brother, brother, Khalil Kwali. Now, not only is Kwali on my favorite conscious rapper list, but he's on my favorite rapper list, top five, top five, top five, top five. All right. Along with Nas, Styles, Rakim, and Black, Thought. Black Thought. I ain't mad at that. Talib did not make my top five. He's on my top ten, though, uh, for, um, for, for conscious Kwali. rappers. Quali, he, he meets both criteria of the question. You're conscious, rapper, rapper. Because he's conscious, conscious, 
all his TV all shows that. And he's a dope ass rapper. All his TV shows that. He is all those things. Probably his nasty from, as fuck. For and me, it boils down to flow, though. He, his, flow, flow. his flow, his flow, he experiment with his flow. Like, I don't like, like, he like, even he, know people don't like when he get on them love songs. Like, he told you that he shit on, uh, yeah. what track was that? Uh, I don't um, remember the song. The, the one with Just Blaze? It might have been. It might have been. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that. I don't like love songs. Yeah. Like, he, he's rapping this shit, though. Like, probably nasty, yo. Quali's I love nasty. Quali. The, it, Reflection Eternal is one of the that's one of the albums I put on when I need to refresh. Yep. He can't reset you. Probably reset me like a motherfucker. And get you right. Yeah. Aaron? Shout out to Kali Kali. Aaron? But how but, how, how, how about Kali? No, number one. Oh my number one. Oh my number one. Mm-hmm. My number one, number one is, is Immortal Tech. Immortal Tech. Tech. Wow. I like that. Okay. Man, this guy, Man, this guy like, 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 he just, he, he embodies everything, everything that we talk that about, we talk from, about um, from, um, Chuck D, Chuck D, and mm-hmm. KRS, and, mm-hmm. and um, and, and it's a, and it's a shame, it's a crying shame to me that he, he like so overlooked, like, and I. Is the bigger is issue the big that, well not so much an well, issue, not so much the reason that he, the reason that he overlooked, I think, is because, because he's because independent. He's independent. Uh, yeah. But for but for but me, for, that just for add me, on to add you know, on. you know, why he on my list. why he on my list. Okay. Any any rhymes or songs in particular or Twitter hands? You know, Twitter hands apparently are. <laughs> I mean, he, he get busy. He get busy on Twitter every now and then. He not as uh, he don't go in as hard as uh, Talib. Every um, day, every day, every day, the week. Or Chuck, or Chuck, or Chuck. D is another honorable mention for Twitter too. Twitter too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, yeah, as far as our song that I would pay yeah. point for uh, mm-hmm. people to listen to that don't know, don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, um. You never know. You never know. Featuring Gene Gray. Gray, like that, like, like that's Gray. that's a song. That's, that's a song. song that's like song, that's like, one of those that's songs. One of those songs. Uh, that, uh, that if I ever if go I to ever, a Immortal Take Me concert or I ever see the person, I want to ask them like, you know, was that based on a true story? True story. Mm-hmm. Because um, Cause, for those that for those that listen to the song, it's basically about um a girl that he grew up with, in love with, love. Mm-hmm. And then you know, initially, initially he found, he out, found that out that she was sick, she was sick, and she died and she from died the sickness that she had. Oh no! Yeah, at the yeah, end yeah, of that, yeah, yeah. I figured y'all I didn't figured hear y'all it, didn't so, hear so it, I didn't want so to spoil it or whatever. Or whatever but but it's, oh it's, no! Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty it's dope, pretty song. dope song. Um, I think um, a lot of people probably be turned off by his flow more so because it's not always. It's not always it's not as always attractive, attractive as people would like. like. Mm-hmm. And he can be like pretty, that, aggressive. pretty aggressive. I feel like that happens a lot with a lot of people that we would call conscious. They like it's generally the flow a lot of times, plus the content that throw people. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he, yeah, but he, yeah, he definitely yeah, he number one for me. Like I was, like I was, I was listening, to I was him, listening to him, you know, just you contemplating know, just my list, list, my list, um, on the beat, on the beat. Because um, it's a couple people that I was considering, considering mm-hmm. that people don't that talk people about a lot, like, like Brother Ali. Brother Ali. I like Brother Ali, Ali too. Mm-hmm. I like Brother Ali. Um, um, you know, Killer Mike and, was in is in my top uh, ten, but I did yeah. not I did not bring oh, wow. Killer Mike out. Whatever, yeah. Killer Mike. Is but Immortal Technique, he got a he got another song, which uh-huh. is probably his more his more popular, popular. and would we'll probably and we'll put him in the put him uh, uh, realm of realm shot rapper. Yeah. Called Dance with the Devil. I know um, Immortal more from the shock rap than I do from what you're talking about. And I think that's probably why I, you know, why that was. Because I, I, I did the same thing Ant was talking about. I, I'm like, 
he makes me think, but is it the things I want to think? So maybe, I, maybe that <laughs> wouldn't be. Right, right. But it's not. It's not always. It's not always like it's aggressive. It's aggressive, yeah. but it's not always it's not negative not with him. Like he talked about a lot of things. Like I was watching it, um, one of the Vlad, one of, like old like, Vlad like, interviews. He was talking about how how because Vlad tried to ask him about the Illuminati, Illuminati shit, Illuminati shit. Mm-hmm. and he was basically, he was basically like, like, um, um. I need, I need, you know, people, you know, people to stop, people to stop, not quoting her, quote her, quote her or whatever. But he was basically like, like, people should stop people focusing stop on some shit they can't see and focus on the shit that we do see. see. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? like, it's, it's, stuff, that it's they, stuff that they putting in our food. Our food. It's all types of all stuff that's going on out in the world that we see, see with our own eyes, eyes and people aren't trying to do anything about. Not see. You asked me, you asked me about some Illuminati shit. Not see that right there. That segues perfectly. And um, into my number one. My dad, my dad. Um, Dante Smith, aka. Musta. Yasin Bay, aka. Umi Sun, aka Musta. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold on. I got confused. I, got confused. I thought that was. <laughs> What? I thought that was our number one. That's my number one. Well, most is well, definitely. I thought we He's were not. on number one. We are on number one. I just, I just gave my number one. I've got to count. I've got to count. I asked for your number one, and you gave it, and then he gave me his number one. And that's my number <laughs> one. And what is going on with you today? My number two. I can't, I can't <laughs> deal with you. <laughs> so the reason why I pick most deaf for my number one is because like most deaf was the first person I ever heard write like talk about the water I was drinking. Most like most the disgusting, y'all. Fucking water I was drinking. Like, that track and, is fucking bananas, yo. And, and, and then, you know, like he he. <laughs> He was the first person I know. Look, (laughs) from the very beginning of Black on Both Sides to the very ending, and most deaf whole life, like his every step he takes, everything he does is like, except for the crazy shit with women sometimes. But all the rest of it is like everything he does, every breath, it's it's just just steeped in consciousness. Mm-hmm. All of it, like every, and for me, there's never been anybody else who, from the very beginning, like when he first, when that beat drops on Black on Both Sides, and he starts oh going God. in, I was like, Fear not a man. Fear not a man. From the very is one of my I favorite like, songs my of whole, all time. Everything, my face. My ears, all the pores on my body, everything was open. <laughs> everything was open. Let Fear Let Not a Man is one of my favorite songs of all time, and it's my just sir, this nigga was, talking. There's he no was rhyme. Just talking in the There's beginning. no soliloquy. There's Lord no double line tundra. Like this like, nigga this just talking. He just straight That's told you. <laughs> stop asking. Stop. Stop asking where hip hop is. Hip hop is wherever your ass is. Wherever you gonna be, that's no, where hip hop is. That shit. I love yeah. that fucking track. Fear not a man. Yo, best I was intro just like, all time. I could not. Like I couldn't. And this was. You gotta remember what was going on during that time period. That was 1999, and you had a whole bunch of fuckery everywhere, and you know you hearing all this, you know, dumb shit. And he just dropping that shit on you, like yo, yo, yo. I was like, yo, crazy. I've always I've said always that shit. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I put, I put most definitely, I put most definitely, um, high on the list. He didn't make my top five, but he definitely high on the list. Even higher than Khalid. And this is not talking to me, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I feel like, I feel like. Most did come up with anything after Black on Both Sides. I would have been good with that. It would have been higher on my list. I feel like I feel like if most 
most needed most more albums. Not more albums. Albums were great. I love the albums. I love the catalog. But he's too far away from the time. See, I didn't. It it didn't bother me that he did that because, and and, and we'll talk about him on the on the sing songy, you know, rappers who sing, singers who rap, sing song rappers who, because he 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 kind of he jumps back and forth doing so many different things that he can do. It just doesn't bother me much. The new danger is a fantastic album. I love it. Talib, it is. Talib don't do that. I was around. Talib don't do that for me. Talib don't do that for me. Like Talib like, doesn't Talib have an album, album that is that more is just more definitive just for me that I just like. I just like. Go listen to Live Up with Jim Gray. He's singing the hood. That's all he's singing. Hey, listen to Live Up with Jim Gray. He's singing the hood. That's all he's singing. Yeah, like like black on both sides could have been like him dropping the mic and walking off. And black on both sides is five mics on the course. If it's not five mics on the course, yeah. That's yeah. it. That's fucking perfect. That's a perfect album. Black on both sides. 100%. So, we are now going to our recess portion. Recess. Recess. And who do we have for recess? I'm going to let you guys do recess because I'm pretty sure I'm not familiar with this person. How don't you know who Sky Zoo is? I haven't heard Sky Zoo yet. That's why I have y'all around. What you talking about? Sky Zoo is nasty than than a motherfucker. No perfect. No perfect. Nasty, nasty, nasty. A motherfucker. Sky Zoo is dope. Sky Zoo is Yo, Bart. All right, we're going down. I got a copy of Bart. I got a copy of Bart. 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 Guys on tour. Okay. Guys on tour. Um, recess um, though, I want to talk about a couple people. I want to talk about, 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 about uh, I wanted to talk about J. Cole, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Rhapsody. Cole, definitely. Rhapsody, 100%. Rhapsody, Rhapsody, Rhapsody deserves from... your respect. I want to get down on one knee and ask Rhapsody to marry me. Let's hope she says yes. <laughs> and, let's, and, and let's hope that you don't get slapped because, um, no. Well, um, well, Maureen listens to the podcast. I'm I was sorry. getting ready to I say, like, you. how was Maureen going to feel about this? Wait, wait, no, hey, yeah. no, hey, yeah. hey, Maureen, baby, I love you. I'm sorry. But Raps, you were married. Oh, my God, seriously? This guy, this guy. <laughs> I love, I was, yo, Raps, you yeah. is fucking phenomenal. Fucking phenomenal. She is. Like, she's she's, I she's amazing. I haven't seen nothing like her in a while. I haven't seen anything like her in, like, a, like probably a few generations. Uh, for, yeah, a long ass time. Yeah, yeah. But you know, everybody thinks Nikki is great. Nikki's all Nikki's right. All right. I guess. I guess. Yeah. yeah. What about Jean Grey? Jean Grey. Jean Grey. Jean Grey. Of course she's still there. But she's great. But she's music. great music. She's a weirdo. But she's great music. Great. She's still busy, she's still, still putting out videos, still putting out EPs, like, man, like, can't, her band can't, her band can't, 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 can not 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 yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Had, how do you get Khalid Khalid on the track? One of the dope one of the dope of our time. And you get him the only the owner. <laughs> and that joke, that joke, that joke, that joke, that Play, play. Get too far to get about Yeah, that's my shit right there. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can Stop, Tyler, 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 Tyler,
and wait a minute, because you were talking about Rhapsody or Gene exactly. Gray. Exactly. I was talking about research. I, I, I want to say Rhapsody, Aaron, Gene Gray, but I feel like, but I feel like they go in and they go in a little bit. Little bit. I'm looking at Jean Grey. She's close. She's closer to my age. She's like two years younger than me. I didn't know she was that is old. She, I thought she was. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's your OG. I had a, I had a conversation with her like two years ago. She's forty. I asked her how much it would cost for her. She said I had to pay her. Right. Had to pay her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow. <laughs> Why didn't you do it? <laughs> because I'm broke. I'm broke. Hurt. So much. Let me save up. Let me save up. I owe Sunday on the first too. Is he? I owe him a break. He charged me a snack. Shout out to Sundown. Sundown was a good one. Sundown on Sunday. I know. Enigma never answered. Enigma never answered. <laughs> What's up there? What's up there? What's up there? Right away. Right away. Yeah, we oh we gotta get Sundown back on the show. He likes yeah, the he show. Likes, yeah, he, likes, he likes our topic. He likes our topic. Mm-hmm. I think we have some really dope ass topics actually. Yeah, shout out to all the podcasts. Uh, 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 well, you know what? I think I think what we're doing <laughs> is I think we're sharing topics with people because. I think we all talk about, talk about. are talking about things that need to be talked about, so we're kind of all touching on it at the same time, and yeah, I yeah. think that's a really good thing. It's a beautiful it's a thing beautiful when people are on the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I just, said, are, uh, are, I just wish that YouTube would stop fucking with people and their monetization YouTube, YouTube. and not let them get their money like the way they're supposed to. That's yeah, that's disrespect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, Chance Apparently Rapper Chance is the rapper so all like, so like. Oh, not again with Chance. <laughs> <laughs> Do Chance can have a copy of the I think so, a little. Maybe, maybe. I think I think him and Vic do because Vic is his content is going off more into a conscious level now. I'm going, I'm going on the record. On the record. Vic misses Vic kind of like what's like what's put up and put up and. You said what he could have been? Oh, Yeah, they go boring. Oh, wow. Yep. yep. What? That's weird That's to me weird. because they go boring to you were listening to boring ass Asso album. Asso album. <gasps> I love Asso. Album. Oh, wait. Yeah, oh, that's oh, when it came, came out. Absolutely. That album was perfect. Perfect. That shit boring. 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 Oh, wow. That I don't even perfect. know who my... Stop I don't even know who my co-host are right now. I don't even know who my co-host are. Stop the asshole. That house was perfect. I love that and Absol. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's it. Yo, that Absol. I didn't like Absol's last album at all. I, I, yo, bro. He said listening. perfect for what? That shit was perfect, though. Perfect. Look, perfect. if you hear like, some folks like, tell it, um, J. Cole got an last album with perfect for folding clothes and washing your... <laughs> and washing, <laughs> and just doing your, doing your dishes, too. He put out an album for household chores. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, I man. I love that shit. I loved it. <laughs> it's cool. I like it. I like it. I love. I like J. Cole's album. <laughs> I, I give this album a solid four and a half out of five. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. That nigga said four. Good for what? <laughs> Absol, <laughs> Absol, 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 Absol. I like Absol. For what? Pick one me some songs. Pick one me some songs though. Like, you gotta listen to it. Gotta listen to it in the context. I'm That's good. How, like, Never mind. I, I play Absol like one big sort of ongoing. Like I don't even just. I don't like, you know, point to track. I just kind of throw it on like you do. Uh, what's his yeah. name? Childish Gambino and just like let it ride out. Like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't pick no Childish Gambino song out for you. Like, yeah, I, I, I put it. All right, all right, all right. So I got to school. I got school. His mixtape is dope. Who? Who? Childish Gambino. Gambino. Uh, I'm good I'm on the conversation. Good on the conversation. Absolute, 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 absolute. Absolute. <laughs> 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 Control system is dope. 
I so felt, felt his. I so felt Aaron changing the subject as soon as you said <laughs> y'all didn't get me those mixed they, they, good. They, they are. They really are though. They really are though. And and, and because and, the internet and, is dope too. too. I don't know how. I don't know how dope the internet is. is. Because the internet because is dope, it's so like halfway uh, uh, through uh, experiment, you can experiment, experimentation on that album. Wait a minute, do you, the the internet? Internet? do you mean the group the internet? Do you mean the group the internet? No, his, no, his first, first, oh, 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 I like, I like him. Oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, and you mean his first? Okay. He experimented he heavily on that though. I like the group the internet. I don't know what that is. I saw this headline on Facebook yesterday. It said there's a band called 444. And they put an wow. album out called Jay Z. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, yeah you are dumb as shit for this track. For real shit, real. Nah, that's real. I seen it too. <laughs> what? That is stupid as hell, Tim. That's funny as shit. Oh hell no! That is funny as shit. <laughs> oh no! But that's our show today. That's crazy, right there. Um. <laughs> So, um, the extra long bell. Um, homework next week. So next week we're talking about the simps, the pimps, and the Rob and the bro and the bromancing and the Rob Kardashian and the bromancing the Stone Show. And this show is probably one of Aaron's favorites. They're gonna be talking about what. Is it? And what does it mean in this day and age to be a man, quote unquote, black man? Like what defines black manhood? And unfortunately, we're going to be talking about these dumbass tags like simp and the dumbass pimp behavior and the romantical love from hip hop and the fuck boy. The fuck boys. Can't forget the fuck boys. Can't forget the fuck boys. And my Peter Pan syndrome. <laughs> Do that, <laughs> that. <laughs> I died laughing. I was cracking the fuck up when I read that shit. What? You said, 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 said grew up Peter Pan, Pan flashy and dick or whatever. <laughs> I died I laughing. I was cracking the fuck up. <laughs> Because it's just, you know, apparently that's what, what you know, what passes for manhood is just walking around with your dick out 24-7. Oh, my God. Uh, y'all got to see this. Paddington Bears get messy, messy. Paddington Bears out flashy. Paddington Bears out flashy. Paddington Bears. Paddington Bears. I know who Paddington Bears is. Yeah. yeah. He's out flashy. You just started right? my channel. <laughs> he was out. He was on Mad TV. He was out flash TV. Oh yeah, I remember that actually. And the cops, the cops got him. Cops, play cops, play, play cops. That was horrible. That was horrible. He tossed him in the back seat and he slammed the back door, but his dick fell out. Dick fell out. So we got caught in the door. Caught in the door. That's him. That's him. Oh no. Oh, okay, man. Aaron, Aaron, I gotta ask, even on the show before we get off the show, Aaron, what are your predictions for GOT tonight? For tonight? For tonight? Yep. Somebody's gonna die. Ha ha, very funny, Ant. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> it don't turn it into don't no craziness, but, but, you know, after you we know, get the last thing, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard for our attention not to stick. Between, between, between the nearest and the nearest. No, no. Do you think John is going to bend the knee? After yet? After, 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 after last I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. And what do you think? Now, here's my big thing. 
do we think that Cersei is going to hold her hostages, her gifts that she gets from Euron Greyjoy? Do you think she's going to hold them or she's going to turn them over to the mountain immediately? Tune in next Tune time for Dragon Ball. 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 Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no one's thirsty. Yeah, no one's thirsty. She's going to ride it out. Yeah. Like somebody somebody going to get the worst of it. Oh, you know she's going she's gonna to fuck old girl up. Um, She can't stand her. Uh, uh, What's her name? Uh, baby mama. Uh, Oberyn's baby mama. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, she can't stand them. Why does everybody hate the sand snakes so much? Everybody was a plot when they were dead. Like, I don't hate the sand snakes like that. I don't get it. Anyway. Yeah, I, don't, I don't understand either. She kind of bad, kinda too. Bad nice. too. Nice. I don't, like, those, snakes, those, those sand snakes can get fucking down. They be like... Yeah, yeah. They why, be she, why, 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 why does she why, start biking it up? Who? Oh. Um, we don't use those words. We don't use those words on the show. <laughs> oh my bad. <laughs> what? Who? Oh, you mean? Oh, because you, oh, she 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 um. Remember her Oprah and her um were both bisexual. Yeah, that's why they aggressive why they like that. They don't like men. But see, I don't know if they're all like that. I think that. Did they talk about their sexuality on anything before? I can't remember. I don't know. You talking about the part where, um, where the bull was like, was she asked him who was the most beautiful woman in the world and all that? Uh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, because yeah, around that time, I was thinking like, I, I assumed that they were gay or gay or but then I I'm like, I don't maybe, think they were I'm gay. like, maybe their they were both gay. And father, yeah, because their mother and father were both, well, not, not they had a different mother than her, but um, right. their father right. is bisexual. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, so, and, and, and they're around, even though she wasn't their mother, they weren't all raised by their mother, mother. I think she, you know, she had the other four sna- sand snakes, and then you know they were around their siblings, so they grew up in a like bisexual household. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, weird, weird. Yo, you gotta watch this shit, and it's like the I I, okay. Do you think we're gonna see the White Walkers today? Uh, today, someone, today. Someone. Yeah. No, no. Um, it's only um, seven episodes of season, season, right? Season, right? And today is number three. Yep. I think they're going to save them for like the last, like the last three. three. The last three? Okay. Well, that means I think, I think. today's number three. So we got like maybe two more before we get to see. I, and apparently the rest of them are not all walkers because there's only like what, 13 or 12 actual white walkers and the rest of them right. are right. like... And the got, don't they, they got like two giants with them or something? Well, those are, are all the, those are all the ones that they just resurrected. They're yeah, not white walkers, yeah. Nerd. Hey. <laughs> are you a nerd called the nerds of nerds? Seriously? <laughs> Is the nerd calling the nerds a nerd on this show right now? Y'all watch that video. 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 Oh, oh, no, that's one. Oh, no, that's one. Right. Yep, yep. Nerd. Nerd. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> you know what? Black, black nerd girls unite. Okay, we are. We yo, are rare. Yo, shout out to the comic book shop. The comic book shop. The is like, like, yo, 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 the woman that the owns it. Mm-hmm. I would risk. I would risk it all. Again, Maureen, this is the podcast. <laughs> this ain't going on here. This ain't going on here. Yeah, because we're on the air, fool. No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the last time you're going to hear from <laughs> Anthony McCall on the School's Den podcast. <laughs> if I turn on this, y'all know what happened. I can't. <laughs> if I turn on this, y'all know what Yo, I was... Yo, I was, I was, I was I can't believe it.
<laughs> we gonna be like, where did he go? Where did he go? <laughs> 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 no, edit this, edit this out, edit this out. Okay. Keep it, keep it. Okay, look, edit it. Listen, listen, listen. Because I know we all about to get out of here, right? I'm looking at a video right now. It says something about me, me talking about drugs and hip hop. And everybody, like, crazy, crazy shit right now. I want to know what y'all think when y'all watch it. I'm, look, I keep telling y'all. I'm getting so sick of um, the same thing Ant is getting sick of. Like, how you keep going flip flopping back and forth, dude? I need you to stay no. on one side of the fucking fence. I want to, I'm not, I'm not listening to it right now because I'm talking to y'all, but I want to hear what he's saying so I can tell you if it's bullshit or not. Make this bullshit. He's full of shit. I concur. Because uh, I played that, look, I played, um, oh my god, what's the name of the album? I just have him pick up my tongue, too. Um, when's the love so, album? Yeah, when's the like I was playing it on title yesterday. And, don't support that boy. And, and, I mean, we, we play everything because we don't do that on this show. We don't We're get on about. shit and start talking about stuff we don't know about. Like, we... We go play it so we can hear yeah. it, that it's bullshit. Yeah, but that's what I'm at with it now. Like, and it's kind of annoying because I don't even, I don't even enjoy music the same anymore. I listen to everything for research purposes. Like, I listen, like to, I listen to, to to um the um that style that style seven seven mm-hmm. seven. And I can and I can tell you I can tell you that I like, that song, I like yeah, that. I, yeah, yeah. I can tell you I like the album, but I don't have no reason to listen to it again. It's just like, all right, that was all right, that was cool. Really? Um, it went to the next. Yo, yeah, like, sorry, that's how I feel. I'm digging the shit out of that Vic Mensa, John. I'm not even going to front. I, I, uh, before, was it. like, I'm not really into Vic's music. Yo, Vic has made me a believer. I'm straight up. Oh. I like Vic's new album, the, autobi- um, the autobiography of Fuck You Academics. And I think it's... <laughs> 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 well, as long as you don't, as long as you don't go for your button on us, I could, I, I could kind of, I could kind of understand it. Button on you. Because I feel that I feel that way about some people too. Like it's some people that I just don't listen to, but they had like, 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 like they got albums, they got albums, they got they albums they that I listen to, that I like, that I like. Like um, like King Mo, I like, I like uh, God Money War John. I actually like King Mo though. Yeah, I don't fuck yeah, with like it. But I like that. But I like that. He's alright. Question, 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 question. So the question love? Day, yo, Aaron, yo, more for the other day. day. Yo, Arlo, 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 Arlo. Jay Z, Jay Z, Fat, I'm Fat, Kendrick, Controvers. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. But, but, Fab did Fab find the Controvers. On what? See, I don't listen. I don't listen to Fab enough to care. I do. <laughs> oh, really? Wait, wait, wait. Which song? What? The Soul Tape Three, The Get Back, the whole first verse. Oh. See, I fuck with Fab like that, and I like the Soul Tape. Yeah, then nobody else pick it up but me. And me? Like, what's up with that? What's up with that? Look, Fab, is, Fab is, is is also another one that his, his fucking mixtapes are better than his regular songs. Always. Fab is Fab a mixtape artist all day, every day. He is. But did nobody but did else pick up, up for me? I'm telling you, I I have all his um his mixtapes. I bumped mixtape, was it two? I think it's two. That's the one I bumped them off. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said um, old tapes for the rest of his career. Top five rappers. Top five. Yeah, but I mean, he not what? selling them, John. What? He not selling yeah, them, John. Yeah. I'm, I'm not co-signing that bullshit right there, um, Aaron. That's, that's, I'm just the, saying. The old tapes, old tapes are phenomenal. If he, I guess, if I he guess. did that shit, then I, I would definitely, like, that would improve him. As far as I'm concerned. That's, that's, and the conversation of, you know, like dope MCs. I definitely would have to exactly. consider. Exactly. Like he be in the conversation. conversation. Look, he calls Fab goes off on, on his fucking mixtape. He really he does. He really does. 
I don't even know why he even bothers with that other fucking shit. I Fuck hate that. Owls, like, owls. look, we gotta have yeah, a whole mixtape. I don't get the fascination now. with Fab, especially yeah. like recently. It seems like recently, like people like, more excited yeah. about Fab. You know what it is? You know what it is? Because he ain't white on the mixtape. Yeah. I guess, but it's no different to me. Like it's the same, it's the same fan for real. Like to me, I know. Yeah, I know. Here, it's definitely it's much better. More it's more focused. It's, more it's way better. Them Everything Jones, is better. I'm doing the dopest shit. The fucking One, metaphors. Everything um, about them. All of all the fucking double entendres. Everything is better. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah. Really, really, really. Yeah. He I guess. I guess. <laughs> and he responded and he to Kendrick's control version. And apparently and nobody thinks that. I gotta, look, I got to go back and, and listen to that shit now. I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued. The I'm intrigued. The whole first version is about Kendrick. Wow. Okay. And he did it. He did it. And what's funny about it is because Jay Z told him not to respond. <laughs> he did it he over did it over his song. song. <laughs> <laughs> well, see that's that's funnier than getting up on the gram and talking on a money phone, isn't it? Now that money phone, that money phone. Is I didn't. I don't, I follow, didn't, I don't follow Lord Jamal, Lord Jamal on Instagram, but I will now. I will now. Ooh, what did Lord Jamal do? He held up. He he held up. Book. At this there time, you go. there you go, Lord Jamal. Yeah. Yeah. Read yeah. a book, yeah. you Yo, that last phone. that last interview you had with Vlad. <laughs> Yo, that I watched that, 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 that on the way to New York. Like he, like he, he checked he, him, he checked him, he checked him in, 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 in certain arguments where he needed that shit bad. No, when they talk, when they talk about that nigga, like I, like I kind of agree, but I appreciate that. I was actually cringing when he was talking about that part. I, I talking about what the nip about the um, the because you uh, the part. Part. You're playing music on the plane out loud like that's just stupid. Dude, put some headphones on. Come on, man. Right. Yeah, I didn't. Right. But, I didn't but, so much. I didn't so much cringe, but right. I, but I understood, I understood where he was coming from as far as right. like I where he was coming from. Being, yeah. being growing up in that, up era, in that era, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I really want that the um fucking caption that thing to say, read a book, bitch. <laughs> right, right, please, right, please, right. But that's the show. Me and Aaron go, got Game of Thrones to watch. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So we gotta get out of here. Um, and some insecure. And I forgot about insecure. Right. 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 Insecure oh, and baller. Yeah. It's I'm a trifecta, watch, baby. It's a trifecta. Yeah. Yeah. It's HBO. All right. School is. Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> School is officially out. We'll check y'all out next week. Later. Later.